Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Watson Michael from Ceylon Institute of English and Leadership. And once again, we have with us Mr. Seal Silbiga, an international best-selling author. So he's the author of the 10-day MBA with more than half a million copies sold worldwide and two other interesting business books. Also, he's the founder and chief marketing officer of Top Dog Direct Philadelphia. Steve, welcome back. And how are you doing today? Hey, hello. Glad to be back, actually. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, these days we have a bit of interesting things going on. So due to the inflation, there are many like um, low to mid-level income people who cannot afford an MBA, especially the international MBAs. So how will this book, the 10-day MBA, help them out? Well, first of all, the book costs about $20. Mm -hmm. And even if you got 1% of a, an MBA nowadays, which is about $200,000, yeah. you'd be getting, you would be getting your, your money's worth. Uh, the basics of a top 10 MBA are the same throughout throughout the different schools and those basics of accounting, the strategy part, marketing, ethics, finance, mm -hmm. operations, statistics, they're all boiled down in really understandable chunks. Mm -hmm. And so you go right through the curriculum and you really have a good understanding what it is to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk of an MBA. Uh, yeah. I'm quite proud of it mm -hmm. and it's in its fourth edition. So it's been 25 years. So it's been updated several wow. times and the, there's 900 and 900 some odd reviews on Amazon and wow. has great reviews of real people, uh, especially people that don't have a business background that are learning, mm -hmm. thinking they may want to get an MBA education. They'll know they'll get a head start. Or people uh -huh. that I know use it to study for tests yeah. and just people that are just in regular uh, positions that they just want to have that knowledge and know what what's going on. It's it's really covers the whole idea, not just facts and figures, mm -hmm. but the thought process of, to go through. If you're marketing a new product, yeah. the thought process of, hey, I'm going to acquire a company. What does mm -hmm. needs to be done? and different things like that. So I'm quite proud of it. And I know it delivers. Yes, definitely. I agree with you because it's uh, everything is written very clearly in that, right? And um, yeah, on it. So there are many people actually who don't know about this, right? So this has a step-by-step -step guide, okay? Mastering the skills taught in big business schools, right? So oh, could you elaborate a bit more on that? Well, you know, you know, as I said, the different subjects are pretty much the same from each one of them. And what gives an MBA their edge? And not just, it's not to be an expert accountant, an expert in finance. It's being able to take all the subjects together and understand them to solve real problems. Yeah. And that's what you get from the book. You know, they're integrated. There's a lot of examples. Uh, if it's too complicated to be explained in two or three pages, mm -hmm. uh, it's not in the book. It's going to be summarized. Yeah. So some people will, you know, just take one chapter a day and get through it. Some will mm -hmm. just take more time. Uh, or you just have a special um, a special interest, like in accounting. Hey, I really don't understand this. Yeah. Just let me understand what's going on here. Yeah. And people have found it really helpful. I yeah. can definitely vouch for that. I get letters. Mm -hmm. And wow. like I said, on Amazon, there were reviews. And mm -hmm. uh, it has stood the test of time. It's not like a flash in the pan where you put a book out in a year or so, it goes away. This has been a solid international bestseller for 25 years. I'm very Absolutely. proud of it. 
Absolutely. So I'm one of those people who finish each chapter mm -hmm. in a single day. There you go. So that's sure. a red book. Yeah. And yeah. if you can show once again the blue book, the international version. So uh, uh, you got the blue book? What? Uh, the blue one, the international version. Well, that one is, I don't have that. I could okay. find it for you, but yeah, this is the, the US version. There's a, a publisher in Britain that publishes it in a blue color. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not crazy about the blue color. The red color stands out. We learned that in marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, this red color stands out on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And imagine you only had this little bit of shelf space from the spine, you know, yeah. red says, hey, look at me. And yeah. that was part of the uh, give and take process with my publisher, actually. Yeah. So I did not have a, a say in it being blue, but there you go. So there you go. So if you see something in blue, don't forget it. Just go ahead, buy it, right? So I still remember I was with my friend. We went to a department store mm -hmm. uh, a few years back, right? Um, I, I still can't remember why we went. Okay, I think it was during the lunch hour we went. And um, I was that time searching to do a good course. And then this book caught me, the 10 day MBA. I thought, okay, let's give it a try. And it's not just a, a draw, you know, it, there's, there's cartoons in it. There's plenty mm. of charts, there's examples. You know, the ch what kind of business book puts cartoons in there to liven it up? And it's yeah. written from a student's point of view. I'm not a professor. I'm a business person. Uh, I have a short attention span myself. Mm -hmm. So it's all broken down. Um, when, I, when I was going to business school, we were grouped in groups of six. Okay. And you kind of had to help each other. And we had somebody whose previous job was in the Peace Corps okay. in, in South America. So he had no business experience. Mm -hmm. So I had to explain some of these topics to him wow. in a way that he could understand. He's intelligent. And the only difference between him and I is I had this prior background mm -hmm. in accounting and that was my pr prior job. So I'm pretty good at explaining difficult things in wow. a simple way. And that's what's all in the book. Absolutely. So that's what we need actually these days. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, can, we, can we talk about an interesting story or two with uh, regard to any chapter in this book? You know, one of the, it came up in my personal life. And I think the, one of the most important pieces in the book Although it's not technical, it's in the organizational behavior area. Mm -hmm. And there's a section, it's from the Harvard Business School. And it's okay. called Managing Your Boss. There was right. a handout that we had in class. And I know it's taught through business schools throughout yeah. the top yeah. 10 business schools. And you could have the best, the best ideas. The, you have just the right skills or what have you. But if you don't manage your boss well, yeah. you're not going to be evaluated well. You're not going to, um, you know, not to succeed. You're not going to get your point across. And yeah. the article on the organizational behavior talks about managing upward, not downward. Yeah. So understanding where your boss is coming from, what yes. their needs are, how do they want to be communicated? Do they want to have in-person meetings or email? Do they Good. like notes? Good. That type of thing. And you know, one of the most important things is bosses don't like surprises. So mm -hmm. by keeping them updated in the way they want to be kept updated, there won't be surprises and you get to understand them mm -hmm. and then you become a better employee. Yeah. And hence, later on, a better boss. Yeah. So it's it's all about managing your boss, right? So a very few people yeah. have mastered that, right? And, and that's really important for your own career. Yeah. You know, being a good manager and managing employees is one skill. But what really makes, you know, makes a difference in your career is how you're looked at from your bosses and your boss's bosses. 
And so that's a key piece that's in the book. Absolutely. For sure. And there's, um, there's in the accounting area, uh, it explains count, accounting from the basics to the more sophisticated only within 15 pages. It's not long. Mm -hmm. And I was called upon, there's a company in New Jersey okay. that had a group of, en of engineers mm -hmm. and that group of engineers are not business people at all. And so what they did is they gave the 10 day MBA to this group of engineers and said, over the next month, you all read the book and then discuss it at lunches. And wow. the accounting, the accounting chapter was something that really affected these engineers because they were being evaluated on their production schedules and their costs and what have you, but they didn't have a background in it. But after they read the book, they had a real working knowledge so they could talk the talk. If somebody in finance would talk to them, they would yeah. be able to understand, you know, what they were talking about and, and really have an in-depth understanding of it as well. And so it's not just for business people, it might be an engineer. And th that was a group of uh, engineers in New Jersey. So the book has a very broad audience for sure. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. So it's not only business professionals, it's other profession right. holders as well. This book will benefit them a lot, actually. Like, so, say you're an inventor. Yeah. Um, and you want to understand, develop something new and know, do I have a really good product? You can go through the process in the marketing chapter of product development step by step to understand, do I have a product that has a market? Do the economics work of the product and really have a framework to really vet your idea yes. before somebody else does? And Correct. that's what a high price consultant would do anyway. They would run you through the same exact framework. They would ask you the same exact questions, but those questions are in the book. Yeah, you know, to figure out how do I market a new product, mm. and that process is in the book for sure, and it hasn't changed. You know, the examples change over the years, yeah. but the basic methodology is 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 key. And I just spoke to a graduate who graduated uh, this year mm -hmm. from the University of Virginia, okay. and I go, "Has there been any real changes?" He goes, "No, that's exactly the way they teach it." Wow. And so you can be confident that the book does deliver on the promise. There you go. So I, I really like it, actually. Right. So it could help a lot of entrepreneurs who do not have a business degree. We have a lot of entrepreneurs, right, mm -hmm. who do not have business degrees. I'm sure this book is going to help them a lot. Yes. Right. Or say you start a, your own um, your own store. Yeah. And say you're an entrepreneur, have your own store. Well, then you're going to really need to know all these different functions and have a working knowledge of that. And, and the book delivers that chapter by chapter. Yeah. And I mean, it, 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 you know, for $20, it really, it pays off. If Absolutely. the book was $100, it would still be worth it. Because if you avoid one mistake while you're doing, you know, starting up your business, it's, it's gold. Mm. It saves not only time, but money. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's spot on. I totally agree with you, right? And I just love this book. Okay, it's such, a, such an interesting book, right? Well, thank you. Yeah. So uh, these days, we see uh, sustainability growing in a big way. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I heard you're going to uh, do a revision. Uh, the fifth edition is coming. So are you mm -hmm. going to include about sustainability in this book? Yeah. One of the things that they teach in business school, and it's a new area. Mm -hmm. It's not revolutionary in any way, but they call it ESG, ESG. Yeah. And what it really means is environmental, mm -hmm. social, and governance. Yeah. And so it's a way of looking at a business from not just a profitability standpoint. And mm -hmm. so 
you know, some people like to invest in quote ESG companies that are, are work on sustainability that are earth friendly and what have you. And yeah. so the way that people go through this process and I can kind of run it through for you if you look, sure. if you like. So sure. like, so what you would do is you take a company and you evaluate its environmental impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, do they have policies in the company to address waste, pollution, yeah. natural, you know, natural resource conservation, yes. treatment of animals, and then you go through in a uh, in a systematic way, even mm -hmm. from a production standpoint, what resources are being used to create yeah. your product, what resources are used to deliver it. Uh -huh. And then when the product is, you know, used up, you know, how is it disposed of? Yeah. And you have a full cycle that you review. There's wow. also people review, you know, what their carbon footprint is, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And that's just one view or one lens to look at a company, mm -hmm. which is very important, which when I went to school, it wasn't that big a deal. The yeah. idea that somebody recycled bottles was a big deal now yeah, yeah. you want to if you're if you're uh, driving a tesla and you think you're saving the earth mm -hmm. because you're using electricity instead of gas yeah well what did it take to make the batteries that are in that car mm -hmm. right and yeah. there's a lot of minerals that have to be mined mm -hmm. then not only when you're driving the car what about after those batteries go bad and they have to be disposed of? Mm. You can't just throw those into the garbage. Are they going to be reclaimed? Are those going to be toxic waste? And yeah. so it's like looking from a holistic point of view, you know, wow. is the product just a good product for the earth? Is it an, obviously a Tesla doesn't mm. emit CO2, but yeah. there's other criteria as well that has to be evaluated. Very interesting. Uh, yeah. The other, the second one, the S means social. Uh -huh. And they look at the relationship of the company with its stakeholders. Do they okay. treat their employees well? Yeah. Do they treat their customers well? Their stakeholders, their yeah. local community that they're in, are they a good neighbor? That type of thing. Yeah. And like environmental, are they pouring their, their waste into the river that mm. the community has to deal with? Yeah. And so, and also in social, you know, it, diversity and inclusion, is there a diverse uh, workforce? Are they included mm -hmm. in the company and the decision making yeah. and yeah. inclusivity, you know, gender differences? Is yeah. there any Me Too issues of yeah. sexual harassment? So you're looking at the company, not just from profit and loss, Absolutely. you're looking at from a social, a social impact. Correct. And then the last part of it is G, the mm -hmm. ESG is for governance. Mm -hmm. And so that means who's making the decisions and yeah. are those decisions transparent to shareholders, the community and what have you. So yeah. do you have a, a diverse board of directors? Yes. Important. Are there regular reports? Yes. Can people see what you're up to and is it clear and transparent? Uh -huh. And, you know, there's there's certain rules that are demanded by accountants in their financial statements. Yeah. But this one goes a little bit further uh, because it's it's a higher standard than you just have to do it. It's like mm -hmm. taking, you know, raising the bar so yeah. that you're a corporate citizen. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm just saying transparent accounting, right. I, just like I said, uh, and are they accountable to shareholders? A lot of companies are owned by a few people and they control everything. And mm -hmm. they feel like, hey, I can make certain decisions without, yeah. you know, without the consideration of shareholders. Yeah. Uh, a lot of a lot of major startups who are now Facebook, Google, what have you, yeah. there's a really highly concentrated part of their companies. So they aren't all that open to mm -hmm. the outside but wow. when things but when things come to light yeah. and a more enlightened company 
is more aware of privacy issues, more aware of what their effect were on, on little kids that are, you know, you know, looking at content on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. And that makes the bigger issues because there's a bigger impact. And the more transparency there is like to the algorithm that runs Google or the Mm -hmm. algorithm that feeds you either intelligent material to look at on Facebook or in main awful false information that's an issue. And you want to know why is this algorithm feeding me this garbage? Well, yes, it should be more transparent why it is. Correct. So, and, and that's a whole new area. And I will get into that. Um, mm-hmm. It's more common sense. But yeah. if you're in the business world and someone says ESG, yeah. you should probably know what that means. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Spot on. Okay. And I just love that explanation. Okay. So very well articulated. So I, I, I assume we can expect more of it once the book is published in detail. Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'll summarize it and make it clear in a, a page or two. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That That's what the whole book is about. Yeah. Super. Wonderful. Great. So Siva, we thank you uh, for taking your time and explaining about this. And um, any final message you would like to give your fans worldwide and who need motivation? Well, I am a real believer that anybody who puts their mind to it can achieve what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Um, It just... You know, it doesn't really take a genius to be successful. It just yeah. needs persistence and a positive mental attitude. If yeah. you believe bad things are coming your way, they do. If you believe yeah. positive things are coming your way, they, you're attracting positivity and people will know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like the very beginning of this book. Yeah. You know, I wrote the book. Uh-huh. And... I was trying to get some people to review it. And one of the famous people who who wrote a review of the book that's on the back of it, he said, you know, only 5% of people will ever get their, of of authors will get their book published. And of those 5%, only 5% of those people will sell a significant number of books. And I said, you know, when I get my book sold, I'm going to call you back. Yeah. and tell you that I got it done. Yeah. And so I ha- I sent out the, the, the manuscript to uh-huh. at least 20 different people. Wow, 20. At least 20. All and right. I only got back two responses. All right. And they were just really short form letters. Okay. okay? okay. And the form letters was discouraging. But then oh. I was doing some volunteer work at my business school. Okay. And I asked another published author, I said, uh-huh. how did you get your book published? And he said, yeah. uh, my agent, my yeah. agent, uh, you know, found a publisher for me. And so, of course, there's this moment. What do you do? I asked, who is your agent? And he yeah. told me, I go, can you give me his number? That's the next one. And he did. So I made that phone call. And within a week, because uh-huh. the book has such a great premise and I yeah. wrote it pretty well. Yeah. We had sold the book to a ma- major publisher mm. in one week. But wow. because, I, because I was in the right place, which was yeah. doing some volunteer work at yeah. the right time with the right product, yeah. things worked out. Somebody else might have said, you know, those are all rejection letters. The world is telling yeah. me this is not right. Yeah. But no, you, if you really believe in what it is, and I could, in my mind, when I was writing the book, I could see the book, I could taste the book, I could mm-hmm. feel it, I knew it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And it, it came through. And I believe people who are watching us, yeah. they just need to have that persistence and that belief and really be emotionally invested in the things that they do. And so yeah. I know that you are one of those people. 
Yeah. And Thanks. I would just say that to your, your people that, yeah, the book will be helpful. It will help you along your way. But, you know, the real source, the real yeah. source is internally in being persistent and positive. Absolutely. 100% I agree with you. Because sometimes people, when they see you doing something good, they are not doing that. Maybe they are facing their own problems and they are not motivated enough to do it. So they laugh at you and they promote negativity. But that's something we need to ignore. Even I have faced it many times. Trust me, like even when the business does well, negativity increases. So that's something we need to avoid it, right? So yes. even, even Dana White from USC says it most of the time, uh, negativity is something which will never go, right? And if you see somebody successful, be happy for their success. Correct. And instead of being jealous, say, what did you do? How can I do what you did? You know, yeah. it, the pie is huge. The world has infinite resources. Correct. So just one person's success doesn't come from you. Correct. You want to learn from them. And that's what the book has. It has a lot of this learning that yeah. will help you avoid mistakes and open your mind to different things. Yes. And yeah, as you said, a lot of people want to be negative because it's easy to be negative, you know? Correct. And so if you're unsuccessful and I'm unsuccessful, we can be unsuccessful together. Mm. So that's just a really bad way. But if somebody Correct. is successful, you want to learn from them. You want to be emulate them, do it yeah. in your own way, of course. But yeah. yeah, the world is a world of possibilities. Yeah, imagine you and I talking from across the world at this yeah. very moment. That's yes. amazing. Absolutely. It had to come from somebody's idea and many inventions had to go into the technology to make this happen. Correct. It's infinitely, it was infinitely impossible yes. to have something like this. And if you remember back, I believe it was 1969, there was a movie called 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's okay. an old movie. And they showed this thing called a picture phone. And it was space age. It was science fiction. We're living that today right now. So go wow. figure. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow, that's nice. What, what's the movie's name? Uh, space? 2001. 2001. Right. Yeah, Space Odyssey. It, it's, it's, a, it's one of the, I think it won Academy Awards. It, it was an ama it was a major breakthrough, but in there they showed this technology of somebody in the spaceship having a video call like we are with somebody on Earth. Wow! And we're doing it, and you're on the other side of the Earth, and we're having this real time call without any glitches. It's amazing. Wow! So super, super, and very interesting. So for those all watching, just have a look at this movie as well. And uh, please like uh, Steve's uh, Facebook page uh, for the MBA. What is the Facebook uh, page name for the MBA? Uh, 10 Day MBA. 10 Day MBA is the Facebook page. Right. And I post things periodically that I find of interest that relate to MBAs or MBA mm -hmm. education. Yeah, it's interesting. It's worthwhile. Excellent. So please go ahead and like his uh, page. And... Uh, so thank you, Steve. Thank you very much for, thank you for having me. time to do this podcast. It's an honor. Thank you.